Hello everyone and welcome back. So we've now looked at both the methods that are used to calculate the break even point for a business. First one was the graphical method that we saw in another video and then there was the formula or the equation method. And you can be tested on both and they both basically give you the same answer but then you look at it from a different perspective one from a more qualitative perspective and the other one from a more quantitative perspective and well, we have established by now that for all companies break-even seems to be a very natural point to work towards i mean of course you want to be operating at a profitable level that, that makes sense everybody's in it to do that but in order to do that you first need to be able to break even right and Sometimes, especially for business in its startup, business that's going through survival, or sometimes when the economic situation is not in favor, or when companies are facing tough competition, they may not even be breaking even, and they might find themselves in a position of making losses. So that's not a good situation for a business, and they need to get out of it. Now, thinking that you're going to turn from your loss to profits in the blink of an eye is not realistic at all. It's always more realistic to first try to break even at least. Let's let's keep ourselves going to the next day, to the next week, to the next month. Make sure we are covering all our costs with whatever we are making so that we break even and at least no liabilities or no debts are being forwarded to the next month or the next week. So how do you go about doing that as a business? Of course, we understand that you have to play around with the revenue and cost because that's what there is in the break-even calculation. And first, we look at the cost side of that. And if you want your loss to convert into at least a break-even before going into a profit situation, you should look to cut your cost. Obviously, that makes sense. The lower you have to pay, the lower your expenses are, the quicker you'll be able to break even as compared to when you have to pay a large amount in terms of covering up for your expenses. So cutting costs is surely one way to do it. But but how do you go about doing that? Of course, what costs you are your resources. And your resources being land, labor, capital, raw material, all those things. So if we decide to go for cheaper raw materials, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. You can save costs, you can reduce your costs, you can save your money. However, but it comes at an expense for a business. And the expense for the business is that when you buy cheaper raw material, of course, the quality of your final product will also be jeopardized. Think about a restaurant. If you start using substandard veggies and meat, then obviously the final taste of the dish will not be the same. Are the customers going to continue to come to you? That's a question you have to ask yourself if you decide to go towards buying cheaper raw material. What about lower rent? Now, anytime you are able to get a deal with lower rent, then there's two things that's potentially that are potentially wrong with it. One, either the location's so far away that you're having to compromise on things, or secondly, it's just a smaller place. So either way, you're compromising and you're producing less or your transportation costs are increasing if you go for low rent. So, so you have to look at it in a holistic perspective, but at least these are two ways through which you can directly impact the cost side of the equation. And if you can reduce your cost by doing that, you, you can reduce your losses and get closer to your break-even point before you can get past that and get to your profit. So that's one way to do it. We tackle the cost side of the equation. What about the other side, the revenue? Of course, we can do something about that as well. And one way to do, uh, one way to increase your chances of breaking even quicker is to raise prices, right? What you want, if you can't reduce your cost, then maybe you should make money quicker so that you can cover your cost faster, right? Now, how do you make money quicker? There's two ways to do it, either by selling more or by selling the same amount of goods at a higher price. So we look at, the price side of it first and if we can raise the prices and for the same good you're getting more revenue in return and that's one way to cover your costs quickly however we know that price has an opposite uh, effect on the quantity demanded of that product so when if the price goes up you know that the quantity demanded for the product is going to go down but please remember this whenever you have to discuss price change you must keep in mind the impact PED has on that decision because price elasticity of demand will determine how many customers decide to 
increase or decrease their level of buying from you. If it's inelastic, price elasticity of demand, then it's not going to have a huge impact on the quantity demanded of your product. However, if it's elastic, then you know that even a small increase in price will reduce your quantity demanded by a greater amount. So you have to look at the total revenue at the end of it, which is price times quantity, to really figure out what's the best decision going forward. But if you have a relatively inelastic demand, then raising price is one way to do it. But what about your competition? You know that the competition is going to want to want going to want to take advantage of this situation, and they may reduce their prices, or they may go to competitive pricing. Any way that they can cut you out of the market, they are going to respond in that way. So you have to look both internally and externally before deciding the price increase. But if you can do that, if you can sell it, if it flies with the customers, once again, you'll see your loss making situation converting into at least a breaking even situation before going into making a profit. Another way to bring in more money is by offering new, more products, new products, new variants, new uses of old products, maybe bring, getting in a complementary product, so bread with butter, you know, uh, tire with cars. So anytime you can sell complementary goods together, you know that you're going to make twice the amount of revenue because if somebody buys one, they're going to want to want the other thing as well. So maybe gaming consoles and computer games, you know, you're bought together. So three ways to which you can look to get closer to your break-even point before you start making a profit. So we know how to calculate break-even, we know how to influence the break-even formula so that we can get to the point quicker and faster, but not everything for what it seems. On the inside, just underneath this graph, there's a few problems that are brewing and we need to look at them, a few limitations of break-even before moving on. So we saw this graph a little bit earlier in another video and we, I mean, we looked at it in quite a bit of depth just want to review it quickly for your benefit. We saw that fixed costs remain the same, so there will always be a straight line regardless of your level of output. Your variable costs will be upward sloping because as you produce more output, you will incur more variable costs. That makes sense. And the collection of those two is called your total cost, which is shown here by the green, green line. Then your revenue, well obviously you'll try to sell your product for higher than it costs you to make it. So it'll always be a steeper graph. And when you s make this line of total revenue, it will intersect with the total cost curve at a point, and that's where the break-even point occurs. Right? We've seen this before. This is a graphical way to do it. However, there is something that we've known to be true about all businesses since day one of our course, and that is a simple concept called economies of scale. And we know that as you continue to increase your output from 10,000 to 20 to 70,000, Technically, your cost of production should go down. However, what we see here with variable cost is that it stays stagnant, constant throughout. There is no decrease in cost indicated in your variable cost curve and in your total cost curve. And that's a big limitation of break-even that it completely ignores the concept of economies of scale. It assumes that the average cost doesn't fall when output increases, as we saw here, the average cost or the total cost, and when you try to average it out, you will see that it is constant throughout. Had it been, had it included economies of scale, this graph would have sloped down upward first and then downwards later. But just remember that this one ignores that concept. Doesn't mean we'll ignore the analysis of break even completely, but take it with a pinch of salt and take this on board that this will ignore the concept of economies of scale. So that's the first limitation of break-even analysis. Secondly, it says very ambitious sales targets, meaning that if they have made 70,000 units of whatever this is, they're assuming that they'll be selling all of them within the month that they plan to produce them. So assume that all output will be sold when we know that that is not always true. Companies are often left with unsold stock, which is rolled over to the next month or the next year. But break even, it assumes that nothing will be left unsold. 
And finally, it also ignores changes in price. We know that when things are going tough, businesses will reduce the prices of their product. Or vice versa, when things are going well, they will look to increase the price of your product. But here, the analysis assumes that all the revenue will be earned at the same price throughout the year. The price will not change. And that's not always true for all businesses. So another limitation that assumes all products are sold for the same price. So yeah, good with the bad, as with most things that we've seen, of course, that there are limitations. However, the uses and the benefits of break even greatly outweigh the limitations and companies still use this to decide things such as launching a new product, continuing with the old one, or maybe making simple decisions such as which location to move to. So in the end, this is why we use break even. Of course, one is to determine whether you want to go ahead with launching a new product or not. You want to see if you can get in the revenue that is used to cover the cost and still have something left over to have a profit. That's the second point of it. Can you make a target? If you have a certain profit uh, target in your mind, I want to make $100,000 this year, then you plan your production accordingly so that you can manage your cost and revenue in such a way and you set your price in such a way that you can target the exact output needed to make the specific profit target that you've set for yourself. And finally, it's just such an easy chart to make and use. We saw a few straight lines here and there, a couple of intersections, and it's very easy to figure out what the break-even level of output is needed for the company to survive. That is your break-even analysis.